Hello and thank you for listening to my talk. My name is Ahan Sengupta and I am a student at the City of London School. All children like video games. Making them, therefore, is a great way to introduce them to the basic principles of programming. And this would also help to increase the range of the age demographic of the Julia user base. You don't want children everywhere at JuliaCon, of course, but this would still help take the language in another direction. One option for game development in Julia is using the simple direct media layer C library, which was wrapped for Julia by Jonathan Bieler. However, it is still a very low-level interface, which isn't great for beginners. The solution to this problem is, of course, as seems to be the norm for Julia users, to create a new package for it. Game0.jl uh, is targeted at beginner programmers and based loosely on Pygame0. It's available in the general registry and uses SDL and colors as a dependency. Game0 has been built to reduce the complexity of having to build a simple game. You should only have to be concerned with how your actors move and interact with each other rather than how the game loops and draws them itself. When teaching beginner programmers, this helps them to focus on the important parts rather than the endless complexities that get game development so often has. Each game and its assets are stored within a separate directory. Within this, there is a single JL file which stores all of the game code as well as three subfolders which store images, music and sounds. All games are executed using the run game function provided by the Game0 package, which means that games do not have to be Julia packages or modules, making it much easier to get started. To initialize a game, you need three global variables, height, width, and background. All of these are optional, and if not specified, they will be defaulted to 400, 400, and white. Game objects on screen can be defined as actors, which have several associated attributes. Using actors, you can move around, change their image, and check for collisions. However, not all moving parts need to be actors, and can, as those without a specific shape or image can be defined as lines, rects, or circles. Game Zero also includes basic geometric shapes, like lines, rects, and circles, as I said before. These can be treated as actors, but do not require an image file. Colors are obviously an important part of any game. Game Zero uses the great colors.jl library to manipulate them. Game Zero can also play sounds using various methods. Using the play sound function, you can play a sound file once. But to play a sound file on a loop, you use the play music function. All game functions are handled by the engine and are called automatically. Game developers do not have to define their own loop as it is done by the engine. The update function is used to change game state and the attributes of the actors, while the draw function is used to draw the actors and other parts. Both are called every frame. Both game functions can take the game object, which is only necessary for things like keyboard inputs. Actors have many attributes to define position. These include things like top, top left, bottom, bottom right, and center. These position attributes can be used to define or set or read position. In addition to this, actors have an X and Y coordinate attributes which is the top left coordinate. Keyboard inputs are often an essential part of a game. In game zero, there are two methods of taking a keyboard input. For an instantaneous input, use the on key down function. But for a continuous key press, like movement, you use the keyboard attribute of the game object, which can be checked in an if statement in within the update function. Similarly to the keyboard, mouse movement can be checked using the onMouseMove function. 
For clicks, you use the on mouse down function. Usually, to set the timer in a program, you use sleep. However, in this situation, using sleep would cause the entire game to pause. So to avoid having to use a complicated async loop, you use the schedule once function, which sets a f function to run after a certain amount of time. Currently in Game Zero, the only method of animating an actor is by changing its image several times in a certain space of time, as seen in the loop on the right. Better animation is most likely coming soon. This is an original game made for the Game Zero examples repo. It demonstrates basic animation, movement and collisions. There are three actors in this game, each of which is pixel art. The spaceship on the left, the laser and the spaceship on the right. This is a simple breakout game based on the version from By Game Zero Examples. It is written in under 140 lines of pure Julia and demonstrates rects and circles. The colors you can see are done using the colors.jl package and this is an almost fully functional game. I hope you enjoyed this talk. I'd like to end by starting uh, to thank a few people. I'd like to thank Avik for making this package and also to, I'd like to thank Nathan for introducing me to SDL at JuliaCon last year. Uh, I hope you create lots of games on using this package and please find us on GitHub.